Um, control binning. Now, what I'm going to talk about tonight is um, a slam binning technique known as control binning. And when I, when I speak about control binning, um, it used to be called Q bidding. So for those of you who kind of know it as Q bidding, control bidding has in a sense replaced that term. It's a slight terminology change. Um, and what it refers to is having a first round control in a suit. Now, a first round control is a card that will win a trick, i.e. an ace. You can have a void if you have a trump suit. So if you have no diamonds and spades of trumps, you will win the first round, is what first round control says. So a void can also be a first round control because you control that suit. It's more often than not, I would like to say 95% of the time, is more often a big card, i.e. an ace. It's very rarely extreme shortage, but you can have control of a suit, i.e. lack of a suit. It is possible, but it's more likely to be an ace. So what this kind of control bidding looks to do is it looks to describe each other's hands, where your weaknesses are and where your strengths are, and therefore capitalise on whether you have fitting hands or not. When you use Blackwood, which is another slam kind of technique, slam bidding technique, you will find that your partner tells you the number of key cards they've got, or number of aces, depending on whether you play your own key card or not, and you don't know which aces they have if you are missing one. You can find that some aces are better than others. Now that sounds like a strange thing to say, but if you have king, queen, jack to six of a suit, your partner having the ace of that suit is very good. If you've got three small of a suit, the ace of that suit, whilst also good, is not as good as, as the other ace, if you see what I mean. So control bidding looks to describe your aces and later kings, which I'll get to in a minute, um, in a way where you can see whether your hands are fitting or whether they are not fitting. And you can then decide whether to push on to look for a slam or not. If you like, it's like a pre preliminary slam investigative tool. For you to be able to do control bidding, you need to have certain conditions met. Because when you make a control bid, you are bidding a suit. So your partner needs to know when that isn't a natural bid. For example, if you're open with one club, and south with one heart, obviously this is a stupid example, but one heart is not a control bid. You're not promising the ace of hearts. Because you need natural bids. The earlier on in the sequence, you need more natural bids. The later on in the sequence, you tend to have described enough about your hand. Three or four bids in, if you get that many, you've described almost everything about your hand naturally. So what you need to do is you need to have kind of conditions that are met, that when those conditions are met, a new suit is a control bid and not a natural bid. Those conditions are in the multicolours. I just like get my colour pens out every now and again. Um, and you need to be game forced. You need to have a suit agreed, and you want to be the opening side. It is possible to do control bidding as the overcalling side, but it is exceptionally rare. I can't remember the last time I did it. So really, opening side you want to be. Um, if they've opened the bidding and you overcall and you have a slam on, it means the hand is quite wild shape-wise. But it is possible to control bid, but it's more often than not you're the opening side. So the reason you need to be game forced is because if you are looking for a slam, game should be a cinch. You should be pretty certain that game... I mean, it's plausible, Trump's break five, nil, every finesse loses, and you don't even make game. But if you're thinking, if you're contemplating a slam, you need to be having game on, basically. You need to have game on because if you don't necessarily know between the two of you, one of you might know game is on, but the other one doesn't, they then don't know whether to keep bidding or not. So if you have kind of underlined game is the minimum, you can then use those bids more fluidly to look for a potential slap. Suit agreed, you need a suit agreed because you need to know what suit you're heading for. <coughs> Control bids are more useful for a suit slap. It is possible to end up in no trumps, but it's more useful, control bids especially, are more useful for a suit slap because you tend to find that the aces and kings are more important in suit contracts. Controls are so important because you can get the lead. Once you can get the lead, you can do whatever it is you need to do, whether that's draw the trump, set your side suit, or rough this, rough that. Gaining the lead is quite pivotal, especially at the high levels. Sixes and sevens. Obviously, seven, you need the lead. Um, if you lose the first trick, that's it, isn't it? Um, but the lead, the aces and kings become more and more important. If you like, they're worth more and more points the higher and higher you get because they are so incredibly important. When you get to kind of the twos and threes, one for a jack, two for a queen, three for a king is about right. As you get towards the slam area, aces and kings sort of become even more elevated, if you like. They're even better than they already were. So, you need a suit agrees because control bids are mainly looking at suit slams. 
So those two things are absolutely, you have to have those conditions met. You need to both be aware of what the suit is and whether you are game forced or not. So there are several ways to do these things, which I'll look at in a minute in the bidding, but if you have those met and your partner bids a brand new suit, often at the four level, it's around them when you've kind of met these conditions, you should be treating it as a control bid. You're, you're not arguing over what suit because your suit's agreed, and you're not arguing as to whether to go for game or not because you're game forced. Okay? The third one, as I say, you want to be the opening side. I can't remember the last time I wasn't the opening side when I did control bidding, but it is plausible that you're the, op that you're the calling side. I, I don't understand that. What's that? The opening. How can you be the opening side? Because uh, your opponent opens. Your opponent being your partner? N no. Ah, so if, they, if the opponent's open, control bidding is essentially off the table, because if they've opened the bidding, it's highly unlikely you two have a slam if they've got an opening hand. Right. It is possible, and there are, uh, there are instances where they've got 12 points and you have a slam on you two, but it's highly, highly unlikely. So really, you shouldn't really be looking to control bid if they've opened the bidding, the baddies. Right, yeah. If your partner's opened the bidding, obviously you are the opening side between you, so then, then control bidding is fine. This is just basically a caveat to say you need to be the opening side to be looking for a slam when you're looking at control bidding. Um, there is something known, as just kind of a, a, a tangent, if you will, there is something known as Italian control bidding, named after the Italians. Woohoo, <coughs> <coughs> bet you want to guess that. Um, and that is a kind of a special variant of control bidding where they use a more flexible variant. What I'm going to be teaching you is straightforward control bidding, not no Italian flair, if you will. Um, Italian control bidding is very good, but it's more complicated. So that's why I'm going down the more simplistic route. It's not simple, but it's more simple. Um, and that is that first round controls. So when you make a control bid, the first time you bid a suit, you're promising your partner you have control of that suit. Absolute control. Whether that's an ace or a void is by the by. It can be a void because you've agreed a suit, so you will be roughing in whatever suit you've agreed. But it is first round control. There's advantages and disadvantages to playing Italian and normal. I'm teaching you the normal way. But just be aware there is another kind of variant of control bidding. Now, to gain force and to agree a suit um, requires some bidding. So you need some kind of start to the bidding. There are several conventions that tick both of these boxes, well, all three, I suppose, um, in one fell swoop. So a few conventions, I'll just write some examples of conventions where all, all of these things are met very quickly, are as follows. Jack of no trumps. That does both, well, all three. In that, I'll put a little asterisk. In that, you gain force, because that's gain forcing, you suit agrees, because that agrees a suit, and you're the opening side, because you can only use that as the opening side. So control bidding, sorry, Jack B2 No Trumps lends itself very nicely to control bidding because it does everything you need to do, all the conditions are met for control bidding to take place. For example, one heart from south, two no trumps from north. That says, I've got some hearts with you and I want to go to at least game, i.e. tick tick. Game force, suit to greed. With the opening side, tick, off you go. Any bid you now make that is not hearts is a control bid. So if South bids three clubs, that says I have control of clubs. I have first round control of clubs. It isn't saying I've got five hearts and four clubs. You don't need it to be natural. You don't need it to be natural because you've done everything you need to do. Four hearts is the minimum contract you're now going for. Whether South has any clubs or not is kind of irrelevant because hearts are trumps. So you use these bids to show controls and investigate, mildly investigate, a slam. So that would say, I have the ace of clubs, and I'm interested in some kind of slam. Because Jacoby Tuno Trumps lends itself so nicely to control bidding, because it does everything in one bid. Another version, another thing that does everything in one bid, is a splinter. A splinter is a very similar style to Jacoby, but instead of <coughs> promising values for game, you're promising shape. So a double jump, uh, that doesn't work very well, that doesn't leave you room to control it. A double jump in a new side suit says, I've shorted in this suit, I agree this suit, and I want to go to at least game. I.e., tick, tick, tick. Does all three again. Here, you've got less room over Jacoby, but now if your partner bids a new suit, let's say four diamonds, Again, it doesn't say, I have hearts and diamonds, because you don't need it to be natural. Four clubs said, hearts are trumps. Assuming you're playing splinters, of course. Four clubs says, hearts are trumps, and I have shortage in clubs. 
Now you can do some control with it because you've ticked all of the prerequisites. Okay? So that's another convention where you might be able to do some control bidding after it. These are the two where it does everything in one bit. So control bids, especially after Jacobi, because you've got room, control bids come up far more frequently after these things happen, because it makes your life very easy, because it's done everything in one bit. There are other alternatives. Um, other alternatives are after a two club opener. So, two club asterisk opener. That ticks the top one. A two club opener means you are gaining force to your side. Your hand is so good, you don't want your opponent to pass. 23 plus points if balanced, 20 or so or more if unbalanced. A good hand, basically. The problem here with the two club opener is that there is no suit yet being mentioned. So it doesn't do everything in one. What you need to do is somehow, asterisk, somehow agree a suit. Like so. Two clubs from north, two diamonds from south. Those bids don't really mean anything other than north has a good hand. Two hearts, I have hearts. Three hearts, I agree hearts. Once you've agreed the suit, you've now ticked the second box. So therefore, you are now in a position where you can do control bidding again. Two clubs is game forcing. Three hearts agrees hearts. Both of the conditions have been met. You can now do control bidding. So therefore, three spades from north would not be, I have hearts and spades, because you don't need it to be natural. You have found the heart fit, therefore you should be doing some kind of control for that bit. So that says I've got the ace of spades or avoided spades. If you treat it as an ace, you will be right the vast, vast majority of the time. It's almost always an ace, but not always, of course. Um, let's think of another one. Oh, yeah. One, uh, Trump. And three, X. I will be going more into how to do the control bidding in a minute, don't worry. Um, one note from, from one of your side, ticking that box, jump to three of a suit, let's say three, I've done hearts a lot, I'm going to apparently it's a heart there. Um, one note from then jump to a new suit at the three level. The way you should play this is a six card suit, six plus cards, and slam interest. Because if you didn't have slam interest, let's say you just wanted to be in four hearts, you could either bid four hearts, nothing wrong with that, or transfer and then bid four hearts. You don't need three hearts to be an invitational hand because transfers solve all of the hands from zero points right the way up to about 15-ish. When you get to a good hand, like this, you, jump, you use the three level. We don't actually often use the three level after one no trump because we've got so much fancy things. One no trump, two club statement, two diamonds transfer, two hearts transfer, two spades, whatever you play it as, whether it's transfer or 11 points. You have a lot of sophistication after one no trump, which frees up the three level. So one no trump, three bananas is, are you interested in a banana slam? Basically, are you interested in a heart slam in this instance? So if North was to bid on, because this has set the suit, you, in a sense, agreed the suit yourself. Because you've got six cards, and they've got at least two, because they're balanced, you have agreed the suit. You've kind of forcefully agreed the suit. You've told your partner, this suit is trumps. You've gained force, because you've showed a slam interest. So that has ticked both of those things. And obviously that one was done when your partner opened the bidding. So you're now in a position where control bidding can take place again. Do you see? This one is less frequent, because it, it requires a one no trumper and then a jump to three level. Again, this is slam interest. I would say sort of 16 plus with a six card suit, somewhere in that region. The more shape you've got, the more you can be loose with that point. So maybe, you know, six, four, you might go down to about 14, maybe something like that. Something where you think a slam is quite a likely prospect, opposite a one no trump opener. But here, this again lends itself to control bidding because it's, it's done all of them. Okay? Um, I think there was one more. Let me just think about it. Oh, yeah, four suit, four suit. Uh, four, suit, four, suit. These are all really conventions that either gain force or gain force and suit agree. So they're all conventions that, that kind of lend themselves to this control for stuff. Uh, one heart, two clubs, two diamonds. This one is probably the most vague. Two spades. Trumps. 
Yeah, this one is the trickiest one to kind of get your head around because it requires a lot of work from both of you. It's the most tedious one. Jacob is the easiest. This is probably in like ease, ease order, really. This is the easiest and this is the hardest, probably somewhere around there. So one heart from north, normal. Two clubs from south, normal. Two diamonds from north, normal. Five hearts, four diamonds. Two spades from south, that's the fourth suit. So that's fourth suit forcing. Fourth suit forcing is game forcing. So that's that one done. But you haven't yet agreed to suit. You haven't said whether you want hearts as trumps, clubs as trumps. You haven't said. Part of it is two no trumps, because they've got some kind of spade stopper, I'm guessing. And then you bid three hearts. So the question here is, why didn't South bid three hearts here, or even four hearts here? Why did they bother using four suit forcing? The reason being, their hand is too good. If they bid three hearts, or even four hearts, that would have ended the bidding, most likely. So they use four suit forcing to tick this box, and then they bid the suit afterwards to then tick this box. <coughs> so bidding four suit forcing, and then agreeing with your partner's suit, doesn't show a hand that's kind of unwilling to agree but having settled on it. It shows a hand that's actually interested in more than just game. If South had 13 points and three hearts, they could have just bid four hearts here, couldn't they? They didn't need to mess about doing four suit <coughs> forcing. So the question really is, has South used four suit forcing because they've just learnt it and they fancied it? Or are they, are they up to more? They're up to something, aren't they? Why have they been fourth suit, gain forcing, and then agreed to the opener's suit? They must be into something. They're up to something. And that thing is a slam interest. They must have a slam interest, because otherwise they would have just been gain. So this also lends itself to control bidding. This is far, far more vague. And at the time at the table, there'd be a lot of bids, and it would be confusing. The Jacobi, as I say, is quite, quite straightforward. So here, now, if North was to bid uh, three spades, let's say, that should be treated as a control bid. You don't need the bid to be natural because your partner has gained force and then agreed hearts. No, they obviously only have three card support for their partner in this instance. Because if they've only promised four at this stage, they didn't necessarily know. It is quite specific. It needs sort of a 5-3 fit or often a minor fit. So you investigate a major fit first and then go back to the minor. That can happen as well. Um, if that did have four hearts, yes, they should use Jack so it looks like a 5-3 or 6-3 or something like that. Um, this one is the most difficult. So if there's one you're going to go, oh, that was too hard, that's the one. Because that's the least frequent and most difficult. So it's kind of the least fruit for your labour kind of, kind of way of getting there. These ones, especially the top three, are the most frequent kind of time that control bidding comes up. So essentially, when you're in the bidding, you're the opening side, you and your partner have game balls and agreed to suit. Whenever those things are agreed, there are different scenarios, but they're just more natural bidding rather than conventional bidding. Um, whenever those things are agreed, or rather ticked, you can then launch to some kind of control bidding. 